Students, education is not a name of any degree or certificate that can be shown to others as a proof. Instead, education in the real sense is the name of our attitude, actions, language and behavior with others in real life. So actually, education enables a person to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. Hello students, Jai Hind. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in today's lecture, we will discuss the rules for the image formation in the case of lenses. And thereafter, we will discuss the nature of the image obtained when an object is placed in front of a convex lens. So before we start with the ray diagrams for the image formation, we must make ourselves familiar with the rules for the image formation, right? So let's start with the session students. So I'll state the rules both for convex as well as concave. The rules are same for both the uh, lenses. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first rule. Convex lens, you all are aware, a lens which is thick at the center and thin at the edges is known as a convex lens. And as you are aware students, it is made of two convex refracting spherical surfaces, right? And here we will be dealing with biconvex lens. Both the focal lens are of same value, right? Both the curved surfaces are of same radius of curvature. While in the case of concave lens, you are aware it's a diverging lens and it is thin at the center while thick at the edges, right? So that's concave lens, biconcave lens. So this is the optical center. It is the point inside the lens through which if the ray passes, it remains undeviated. That also we have discussed earlier. So this is the principal axis. Suppose this is the principal axis. Now look, first rule. I have told you, you need to show the bending of light from this reference line. The lens are considered to be very, very thin. So as a result, instead of representing refraction at both the surfaces, what we do is, just for convenience, we consider the bending of light from this reference line. Isn't it? It's because of the fact that we are considering the lenses to be very, very thin. So, the first rule. Whenever a ray is incident parallel to the principal axis, this is the incident ray and it is parallel to the principal axis. Then in the case of convex lens, it tends to pass through the focus. In the previous lecture students we have discussed, convex lens is also known as a conversion lens. So it will tend to pass through the focus. This is the focus. All the rays which are incident parallel to the principal axis on the convex lens, then the rays after refraction tend to get converged at a particular point. And this point is known as the principal focus. Right? So that is the reason why convex lens is also known as a converging lens. Now, in this case the focus is real. So if the object is placed on the left hand side, then its focus would be on the right hand side. Right? In the case of concave lens, the focus is virtual. This also we have discussed. So the focus is on the same side as that of the object. So in the case of concave lens, the focus is virtual. In the case of convex lens, the focus is real. So here also the same rule applies. But here, the ray after refraction converges. Here, it appeared to be coming from the focus. So look, this is the ray which is parallel to the principal axis. So here after refraction, it will appear as if the refracted ray is coming from the focus. This is the actual one, right? This is the direction in which the ray will get deviated. So it will appear as if this ray is coming from a point over here. So this point is the principal focus. So student, what's the rule? Incident ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction in the case of convex lens will pass through the focus and in the case of concave lens it will appear to be coming from the focus. It appears to be coming from the focus. It diverges. So that is the reason why concave lens is also known as a diversion lens. Right? So that's rule number one. I hope it's pretty clear. Right? That's rule number one. Now let's consider the second rule. Again, for both the cases we will discuss, this is the reference line, 
and this is the optical center, this will be the principal axis. So same rule will be applicable in the case of concave lens as well. Right? This is the optical center and let us consider this to be the principal axis. As I told you, again I am repeating, if the object is placed on the left hand side, then its focus will be on the right hand side. That is, its focus is real. In the case of lenses, students, whenever the image is formed on the other side as that of the object, then the image can be always obtained on the screen and in such a case, the image is said to be real. But on the other hand, if the image is formed on the same side as that of the object, then the image can't be obtained on the screen obviously. So it is that case when the image is said to be virtual or imaginary. Right? So this is its real focus and this is its <coughs> virtual focus. So the second rule, just try to concentrate. Right? Second rule is uh, as we are aware, there are two focus. This is also a focus. The real focus is in the case of convex lens, the concave lens, it poses virtual focus, right? So, here the rule is, any ray, incident ray, which passes through the focus, incident ray passing through one of the focus, after refraction, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. Now students, look, it's simply the vice versa of the first rule. First rule is, Incident ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction will pass through the focus. Second rule is just the reverse of that. Incident ray passing through the focus after refraction will become parallel to the principal axis. What I mean to say is that suppose this is the ray. This is the ray passing through the focus. This is suppose the focus. And this is the incident ray passing through the focus. This is the incident ray. After refraction, it will become parallel to the principal axis. This is the rule I am talking about. Right? Either this way, the ray passing through the focus, after refraction, it will become parallel to the principal axis. Right? Over here, ray which passes through the focus will again be parallel to the principal axis. But here, how to represent this one? So it will be like this. This is the focus. Right? So in this case, it will be somewhat like this. Suppose this is the ray which is passing through the focus. If it is produced, then it will be passing through the focus. But obviously here it will get refracted. So here what happens is it will become parallel to the principal axis. This is the rule basically. Right? So again I repeat, in this case, both the rules are same. Both I mean the rules are vice versa of each other and it's applicable for both convex lens as well as for concave lens. The rule number two is incident ray passing to the focus after refraction it becomes parallel to the principal axis. Right? In this case, the incident ray which tends to pass through the focus after refraction it becomes parallel to the principal axis. So that's rule number two. Right? This is rule number two. Okay, the third one and the final one. It's pretty simple. We've done it already. Again, this is a convex lens. This is the principal axis. This is suppose the optical center. This is the focus. These are the two focus. Right? Let's draw the same diagram for the concave lens as well. So, this is the optical center. This is the virtual focus. Right? So, the third rule is, I've told you the definition of optical center. It is a hypothetical point which lies within the cell through which if the incident ray passes, then it won't get deviated. It will remain undeviated. So that's the third rule, like this. Look, incident ray is passing through the optical center. It will remain undeviated. It will not suffer any sort of deviation from its original path. Here also, same thing. This is the optical center through which this incident ray is passing. So it will remain undeviated. So students, these are the three rules which we will be making use of in drawing the image diagram in several different cases, right? 
So before we continue with the image formation, I must recapitulate, I must repeat all the three rules. So students, please listen carefully. First rule is, incident ray parallel to the principal axis after suffering refraction will pass through the focus in case of convex lens and it will appear to be coming from the focus in case of concave lens. That's rule number one. Rule number two, vice versa of the first rule. Incident ray which passes through the focus after refraction becomes parallel to the principal axis. Right? Here, incident ray which appears to be passing through the focus after refraction will become parallel to the principal axis. Clear? Third one, very simple. Incident ray passing through the optical center of the lens will not suffer any sort of deviation in its path. That is, the ray which passes through the optical center of the lens will remain undeviated. So students, these are the three basic rules for the image formation. Now, let's start with the image formation. So what we'll do is, we will start with the image formation in the case of convex lens, right? And students, as I told you, real image, virtual image, the image which can be obtained on a screen, they are known as real images. But on the other hand, those images which can't be obtained on the screen are said to be virtual images, right? And in case of lenses, mind it, I am repeating it very often, again I am repeating it, in the case of lenses, if the image is formed on the other side as that of the object, like object is placed on the left hand side of the lens and its image is formed on the right hand side of the lens, then the image can definitely be obtained on a screen. If you place a screen over there, then the image will be formed on the screen. So that is the real image. And if the image is formed on the same side as that of the object, suppose object and image both are on the left hand side of the screen or both are on the right hand side of the screen, then obviously the image which is formed on the same side as that of the object can't be obtained on the screen and accordingly it will be imaginary or virtual image. Right? So let's start with the image formation. And we will start with concave or rather convex lens image formation in case of convex lens. So there are six cases which we'll discuss turn by turn. So let's start with the first case. Let's start with case number one. Right? When the object is at infinity, right? When object is at infinity. Means the rays coming from the object will be considered to be parallel to the principal axis. Right? So let's check it out. This is a lens. And students remember, the lens are considered to be very very thin. So always remember that. So this is the optical center. This will be the principal axis. And it's a wide convex lens. It has got two focus, both of equal focal length. So this should be the same distance. And this is the reference point, 2f. So twice the distance of the focal length, right? If this is small f, this is twice into small f. It is just a reference point, f 2 f. And don't get confused between radius of curvature and the focal length. The relation small f equals to r by 2, that's not valid in the case of lenses. That is valid only in the case of mirrors. So here there is no such relationship, right? So if this is 5 cm, this would be 10 cm. So all these distances should be equidistant. Then only you will be able to draw appropriate ray diagram, right? So this is the reference line from where the refraction light will be indicated. So the rays are coming from infinity. And all are parallel. So if the object is at infinity, then the rays will be parallel to each other and will also be parallel to the principal axis. Now as you are aware, after refraction, all these rays tend to get converged at a particular point. And that particular point is known as the focus. Right? So this is where the image will be formed. So students, whenever the object is at infinity, then the rays from the 
object at infinity would be parallel to each other and also will be parallel to the principal axis. So because of its converging nature, all these rays after refraction tend to get converged at the focus. Right? So what about the nature of the image? First, object lies on the left hand side. Image is formed on the right hand side at the focus. So it is real. If you place a screen over here, a point size image of the object will be obtained. Right? So image is real. Don't write inverted because it is point in size. Image is image is point in size. Image is point in size. Third situation, third property. Image is formed at the focus. Image is formed at the focus. Right? It is exactly formed at the focus. What about linear magnification? Since it is point in size, therefore linear magnification is zero. Remember students, linear magnification, we have discussed it in the uh, case of mirrors as well. It is defined as the ratio of size of the image to the size of the object. To the size of the object. So since the image is point in size, therefore linear magnification in this case is zero. Right? So this is case one. So image is real, image is point in size, image is formed at the focus and linear magnification is zero. Right? Now let's consider the second case. When the object is at a very far away distance, far away distance, not at infinity, but at a very, very far away distance, right? So, this is the convex lens, this is the optical center, this is the reference line, and this is the principal axis. This is F, this is 2F, this is F, this is 2F. Students, please take care while indicating F to F. All should be equidistant. Please ensure this, right? Now, basic difference between these two. It is the case when the object is at infinity. So, all the rays are parallel to each other as well as they are parallel to the principal axis. In this case, the object is at a very far distance. So, therefore, rays coming from the object will be parallel to each other, but not necessarily parallel to the principal axis. So what I'm going to say is that in this case, the diagram would be somewhat like this. These are the rays which are parallel to each other, but not parallel to the principal axis, right? So here, the rays will again get converged at the focus, but here the image will have some finite dimensions. So what happens is, it will be like this. It will get refracted, and here the image will form like this. This is suppose A dash, this is suppose B dash. So students, the point I am making is, the rays which are coming from an object which is at a far away distance, not at infinity, they must be parallel to each other, but not necessarily parallel to the principal axis. In such a case, the image is again formed at the focus, but here, the image is not point in size. It has got some finite dimensions. So, in this case, the nature of the image is real and since it has got some finite dimensions, it is inverted, real and inverted. Second, it is formed at the focus. Third, obviously, image is very small, diminished in size. Image is diminished in size. That is, linear magnification is less than 1. Mod of n. We are not using any sign convention over here. Just in magnitude, linear magnification less than 1. It indicates the size of the image would be less than that of the size of the object. So, got the difference between these two? In both the cases, the image will be formed at the focus. But at infinity, the image is point in size. While when the object is at a very, very far away distance, then the image is having some finite size. And look, if a screen is placed over here, like this, if I place a screen over here, a cardboard or whatever, a chart that can act as a screen. So if I place a screen over here, then this 
small inverted image of that distant object can be easily obtained. So what I mean to say is that object over here lies on the left hand side, its image is found on the right hand side. Therefore the image can be obtained on the screen and accordingly this is the real image. Clear? So we have discussed two cases. Now what we do is the object is brought still closer. The object is brought still closer. So gradually the object is brought closer and closer towards the convex lens. So case 3 will be when the object is placed beyond 2f. Beyond 2f. So let's discuss third case. Object placed beyond 2f. Object is placed beyond 2f. So, background will be like this. Lens should be thin. This is the optical center, it is the principal axis. And as I have mentioned, please ensure these are the equal distances. These are the equal distances. If you consider it to be 3 cm, it would be 3 cm, it would be 3 cm, it would be also 3 cm. It is only then the ray diagram would be exact and perfect. Right? So, here the object is placed. Suppose here the object is placed. This is A and this is B. And this is the reference line. And this is the object which is placed. Right? An erect object is placed. And it is placed just beyond 2F. So this is case 3. So let's make use of the rules, student. There are three rules as stated. First rule is any two rules can be used, isn't it? First rule is incident ray, which is parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will pass through the focus. It will pass through the focus. Is it clear, students? Incident ray parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, in the case of convex lens, will pass through the focus. This is rule 1. Let's make use of rule 3. Rule 3 was, rule 3 was, a ray passing the optical side of the lens will remain undeviated. This is the optical center, right? So, it will remain undeviated. So, here the intersection of the refracted rays is obtained. So, here the image is formed. So, if the object is like this, the image is inverted. The inverted image is obtained. So, this will be A dash, this will be B dash, right? In case, students, in case you make use of the second rule, then also at the same position image will have been formed. Right? It will be like this. The ray which is passing through the focus, after refraction it will become parallel to the principal axis. So you should have got the same point of concurrency. So out of three rules, it's your wish, students, to make use of any two rules. So as to get the position of the image. Right? So here I have used two rules which are Ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the focus. Second is ray which passes through the optical center remain undeviated. So this is where the image is obtained. So let's find its nature. First, look, it's pretty clear. Image is formed on the other side as that of the object. So image is real. And it's pretty evident from the diagram, it is inverted. Image is real and inverted. What's the second point? Image is formed between f and 2f. Image is formed between f and 2f. Third, look, the size of the image is less than the size of the object. That is, h2 is less than h1 or h2 by h1 is less than 1. That is, the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. H2 students are considered it to be the size of the image. H1 is considered to be the size of the object. So ratio of these two is less than 1. That is linear magnification is less than 1. That is the image of the size is small or diminished image is obtained. Diminished image. So these are the properties associated with the image in this particular case. Right? So what we are doing is, we are gradually bringing the object closer 
towards the convex lens. So, so far we have discussed three cases. Object at infinity, object at very very large distances, object beyond the limit. Now students, let's discuss case 4. Yeah, case 4. The object is brought still closer. So let's see what will be the nature of the image and its position when the object is placed at 2f. So here we will discuss when the object is placed at 2f. So let's try to draw the diagram. This is the convex lens which will be thin. This is the principal axis. And again, it's a reminder, so please pay attention. This f, this is 2f, it should be equidistant. If you consider it to be 5 cm, then it should be also 5 cm. It should be also 5 cm. And this should be also 5 cm, 2f. Right? So that the distance from the optical center, it will become twice 2f, means 10. So keep this in mind. These points are absolutely necessary, so as to draw the ray diagram. These are the reference points, right? You should draw it most appropriately. Now, as for our objective, the object is placed at 2f, like this. This is A, this is B. And this is the reference line through which the bending of light will be shown. Let's make use of the same rules which we are using. Ray parallel to the principal axis. It is the incident ray coming from the object and is parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus, like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. It's clear so this is rule number one. And what about the second rule? A ray passing the optical center, a ray passing through the optical center will remain undeviated. A ray passing through the optical center will remain undeviated. It's like this. This is the ray from the object which is passing through the optical center and it will remain undeviated. So these two refracted rays meet at this point. So, if you draw the ray diagram correctly, you should get the image to be formed exactly at 2f. This is 2f. So this is a dash and this is b dash. If this is the object, Friends, if this is the object, then its image will be formed like this. Inverted image will be formed. And the size of the object is found to be exactly equal to the size of the image. We will justify this mathematically as well by using lens formula. That we will discuss later on. Right? So remember students, in case the object is placed at 2f, then its real inverted and same size image will be also formed exactly on the other side and at 2f. Right? This is a very very important situation. So, what's the nature of the image then? Image is real and inverted. Image is real and inverted. What about the second case? Image is formed at 2f. Exactly at 2f. Third, here size of the image, which is denoted by H2, is equal to H1. Therefore, M, which is equal to H2 by H1, is equal to 1. The linear magnification is 1 and more. If we use sign convention, then M would be equal to minus 1. That also we will discuss later on. Right? But in more, in magnitude, the linear magnification is equal to 1. That is, the image is of the same size as that of the object. Here I must tell you, if you would have made use of the third rule, then also you would have got the image at the same position. I will tell you. So, one of the rules left was ray passing through the focus. Ray passing through the focus. After refraction, it will become parallel to the principal axis. So, you will get the same point of concurrency. So, this is the rule. Ray of light passing through the focus after refraction, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. It will become parallel to the principal axis. So, students, what I mean to say is that out of these three rules, make use of any two rules. Make use of any two rules. 
you need not to make use of all the three rules so as to obtain the position of the image. Just make use of any two rules. Right? So, we have discussed four cases. What's the common point in all the four cases? So far, the nature of the image obtained is real. Right? In all the four cases which we have discussed so far, the nature of the image obtained is real. Right? So, let's consider the fifth case. When the object is placed between F and 2F. Right? So, let's draw the ray diagram. So, as I told you, the lens is to be considered to be thin. So, while drawing the ray diagram, keep this in mind. So, this is the thin convex lens which is thick at the center and thin at the edges. This is the optical center and this is the reference point F. This is supposed to F. This is F. This is 2F. Again, I must remind you students, it is very very crucial point. In order to draw perfect ray diagram, please ensure that this separation should be same. Make use of pencil and scale while drawing the ray diagrams. Right? Please ensure these distances must be same. So, as for our objective, this is the case where the object is to be placed between F and 2F, like this. This is where the object is to be placed. A, B. Right? This is the object, suppose. A, B. Let's make use of the rules. We have got three options, three rules are there. Let's make use of any two rules. So what's the first rule? First rule is a ray parallel to the principal axis. This is a ray parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus. Like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. That's rule number one. Second rule is student, this is the optical center. From where any ray passing will remain undeviated. So, that's the second rule. So, this is the ray which passes through the optical center and it will remain undeviated. So, these two refractive rays meet at a point over here. So, if you drop a perpendicular to the principal axis, here the image will be obtained. And obviously, the top point will get inverted. So, this is A dash and the corresponding point of B would be B dash. Now, look students, it's pretty clear that the image obtained is inverted. The image obtained is of much larger size than that of the object. Also, the image is obtained on the other side as that of the object. So, if you place a screen over here, there the enlarged image can be obtained on that particular screen, isn't it? So, what will be the nature of the image then? It will be real and inverted. It will be real and inverted. What's the second point? Image is formed beyond 2F. Image is formed beyond 2F. What's the third point? Image is magnified, that is H2 is greater than H1. Again, I must tell you, H2 is the notation used to denote the size of the image. H1 is the symbol used to denote the size of the object. So here obviously the last image is obtained. So H2 by H1 would be greater than 1. And the ratio of these two will give us linear magnification. So more of linear magnification is greater than 1. So enlarge the image is obtained. Enlarge image is obtained. So these are the characteristics associated with the image when the object is kept between F and 2F. So this is case 5. Let's discuss case 6. The object students, it is gradually moved closer towards the lens. Right? So now the object is assumed to be placed at the focus at F. Let's see. In this case, what will be the nature of the image? This is the optical center, this is the principal axis, this is F, this will be 2F, again, this, these all are equidistant. So, this is F, this is 2F. We are dealing with the case of a biconvex lens, where the radii of curvature, the focal length are equal of both the surfaces. So, this is the reference line from where the deviation light is uh, considered. So, this is the position where the object is placed, A. Now look, again, we will make use of the same array parallel to the principal axis. It is parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will pass through the focus like this. 
and B, incident ring which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction in the case of convex lens passes through the focus. That's rule number one. What about the other rule? Incident ray passing through the optical center, it will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated. So, it will be like this. So, you can notice a set of parallel beam will be obtained. These are the parallel rays. So, parallel rays, they never meet. So, they will meet at infinity. So, what I mean to say is that it is the position of the object when the image is formed at infinity. So, what is the nature of the image? Again, it must be formed on the other side and highly enlarged image. So, it is real and inverted. Second, where the image is formed, these two rays will meet at infinity. So, image is formed at infinity. Image is formed at infinity. Right? Third. Third point. Image is highly magnified. Image is highly magnified. What I mean to say is that H2 is very very large than H1. Therefore, linear magnification will be very very large as compared to 1. So, linear magnification would be very very large as compared to 1 because H2 is very very large as compared to H1. The size of the image which is formed over here, the size of the image is very very large as compared to the size of the object. So, that is the reason why linear magnification is very very large as compared to 1. So, clear squints? So, we have discussed six cases and in all these six cases, the common point is, the nature of the image obtained is real. There is one very important case left and that is when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus. It is an exceptional case students. It is in this case that the nature of the image will get changed. It won't be real, it will be virtual and direct. So, that is case 7. So, that we will discuss now. So, let's start with case 7. Case 7 is when the object is placed in front of a convex lens between its optical center and the focus. Between its Okay students, now case 7. Case 7 is when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus in front of a convex lens. Let's see. This is a convex lens, it is considered to be thin, this is the optical center, this one will be the principal axis. This is F, this is 2F, this is F and this is 2F. Right? So now what to do is, as per the case, we will consider the object to be placed between the optical center and the focus, somewhere over here. This is the object, suppose this is A and this is B. And this is the reference line from where the deviation of light is considered, is assumed, right? So let's make use of the rules. Ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus. It will tend to pass through the focus, like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. And what about the second rule, students? Ray of light passing through the optical center of the lens will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated, right? So, this is the optical center. So, the ray which passes through the optical center will remain undeviated, like this. And students, please don't forget to indicate these arrows. And dark lines, they represent the real lines. Now look, if we extend these two lines, they will never be able to meet each other. And actually, the gap between them keeps on increasing. So, on extending it further, they will never be able to meet. So, what we do is, we will produce these two rays in the backward direction, right? And since in the backward direction, it has to be represented by dotted lines, like this. So, let's represent it by dotted lines. So, produce these rays in the backward direction. So, what we get is, we will get a point of intersection. 
it will appear as if these two rays are coming from a point somewhere over here. So this is where the image will be obtained. This is A dash and this is B dash. Right? So students you can see in this case the image is formed on the same side as that of the object. The image in this case is formed on the same side as that of the object. So the nature of the image is virtual or it is imaginary. It can't be obtained on the screen. Isn't it? It can't be obtained on the screen. So accordingly, this is the case when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus that the nature of the image obtained would be virtual. For all the other cases, the nature of the image obtained is always real. This is the only exceptional case. This is the only case where the nature of the image obtained is virtual. Right? So this is it. One more very very important and basic points. Whenever the two dark lines intersect, then it will represent the formation of real image. It is valid for both mirrors as well as for lenses. And if two dotted lines intersect, dotted lines means virtual lines, imagined lines intersect, then it will give rise to virtual or imaginary image. Right? Please note down this basic basic things. Right? While drawing ray diagram, if you remember these basic points, you will be able to draw the ray diagram perfectly without any sort of ambiguity or without any sort of dilemma. Right? So what I have stated is, if two dark lines intersect after refraction, then at the point of intersection, it will be the case of, it will be the position of real image. And in case of two dotted lines intersecting at a point, that will give you the position of virtual image. Two dotted lines intersecting at this point, it will give us the position of virtual image. So students, this case is very very important. So what about the nature of the image then? It is virtual and erect. Second, it is formed, it is formed on the same side, formed on the same side as that of the object. As of the object. So that is the reason why it is virtual. And third, Look, it's pretty evident from the diagram. H2 is greater than H1. H2 is the size of the image. H1 is the size of the object. This is H2 and this is H1. So H2 is greater than H1 which implies that H2 by H1 is greater than 1. And students, the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object is known as linear magnification. So linear magnification is greater than 1. Right? So again I repeat, in the case of convex lens, this is the only position of the object when the nature of the image obtained is virtual and erect. For rest of the other positions when it is placed beyond it, the nature of the image obtained is real and inverted. So students for the convex lens we have discussed all the seven cases. Right? Now let's discuss the image formation in the case of concave lens. Let us discuss the image formation in the case of concave lens. So there, in the case of concave lens or diverging lens, the nature of the image will be always virtual, erect and the size of the image obtained will be always found to be less than that of the size of the object. So size of the image will be always diminished. So let's check it out. So, we are dealing with image formation in case of concave lens. In case of concave lens. Here, as I have stated, in concave lens it is found that the nature of the image obtained is always virtual, erect and diminished. Size of the image is always less than the size of the object. It is always found in the optical center of the focus. And being virtual means it is always formed on the same side as that of the object. Right? So there are not uh, many cases over here. So we can discuss the nature formation of the image only in three cases. Right? So let's discuss them. So what to do is, in order to understand completely, this is a concave lens, this is the optical center, you need to draw three ray diagrams. We'll try to study one by one. So we will consider the case when the object is brought closer to the concave lens. 
So what will be the change in the position of the image obtained? That we will discuss. So this is the reference line. Isn't it? This is the reference line. This is the optical center. This point is the optical center. And this is the principal axis. This is the principal axis. Right? This is supposed the principal axis. Let us consider this to be the focus. Same, this to be the focus. Draw all the diagrams exactly identical. So then only you can conclude from the ray diagram. A certain conclusion will be obtained from observing these ray diagrams. So please ensure to draw three identical ray diagrams. Here it will be 2F. This is 2F. And this is 2F. Right? Its focus is virtual. So what to do is student. Here we will place an object very close. Suppose over here. Very very close to the concave lens. Let's see what will happen. Very close to the concave lens. Like this. Suppose we place an object over here. Here. Very close to the concave lens. So as per the rule, a ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will appear to be coming from the focus. So it will be like this. It will appear to be coming from the focus. Right? Rule number one. In the case of convex lens, ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the focus. And in the case of concave lens, ray which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to be coming from the focus. This is the focus. This is the virtual focus of the concave lens. Right? What about the second rule? A ray passing through the optical center, it will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated. So, this is where the intersection of the rays are taking place. So, here the image will be formed. So, this is A dash and this is B dash. So, look students, image is formed between optical center and the focus and the size of the image is small. Right? So image is formed on the same side as that of the object and it is diminished in size. It is virtual, erect. So two rules I have used. One is ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction will appear to be coming from this focus and the second is ray passing through the optical center will remain undeviated. So the intersection of this dotted and dark lines will give you the position of the image over here. This is E dash, P dash. Clear students? Okay. Second is, if I take the object farther away from the lens, suppose here is the object. Please ensure to draw the same size, right? They are dealing with the same object. So this is E. Now let's check it out where the image is formed. Again, as per rule, ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will appear to be coming from the focus. It will appear to be coming from the focus. And second is, ray passing through the optical center will remain undefeated. So look students, here the point of intersection is taking place. This is the point of intersection. So here drop up perpendicular. So this will be A dash, this will be B dash. Are you observing some very basic thing? As the object is taken further away from the concave lens, the size of the image keeps on decreasing and the position of the image keeps shifting towards the focus. Again I repeat, as the object is taken further away from the concave lens, here the object is placed very close to the concave lens, here the object is placed farther away from the concave lens. Right? So as the object is taken farther away from the concave lens, what is noticed is the size of the image will keep on decreasing. And the position of the image, earlier the image is formed somewhere over here. Now the position of the image tends to shift towards the focus. And observe the size of the image. Earlier the size of the image and now the size of the image is smaller. Right? In both the cases, nature of the image will remain same. It will be virtual, erect, diminished. But there will be a difference in the change uh, in, in the position of the image as well as in the size of the image.
So, if the object is placed at infinity, if the object is placed at infinity, infinity means like this, parallel beam will be obtained, like this. These are the rays which are coming from infinity. Object placed at infinity. So what will happen is, it will appear as if the rays are coming from the focus. So if you join these points, if you tend to join these points, it will appear as if these rays are coming from a point on the principal axis and that point is the principal focus. So students, it is advisable and preferable for you to make use of ruler and scale. Avoid any freehand diagram. Avoid any sort of freehand diagram. It's like this. So indicate by dotted lines. Indicate by dotted lines. Okay. So here the point size image will be formed. So students just try to conclude after observing these three ray diagrams. Right? The conclusion is as the object is taken farther and farther away from the concave lens, the position of the image keeps shifting towards the focus and the size of the image also keeps on decreasing and eventually and ultimately when the object is at infinity then point size image is formed exactly at the focus. So this is the conclusion which we can draw from these three ray diagrams. Right? So I will write the conclusion. First is nature of the image is virtual and erect. Second, image is formed, image is formed between optical center and the focus, between optical center and focus. Third, in all the cases, size of the image is less than the size of the object that is H2 by H1 is less than 1 or linear magnification is less than 1 that is image is diminished in size image is diminished fourth point again I am concluding fourth point is fourth point is as the object is taken farther away from the concave lens the position of the image shifts towards the focus and the size of the image also keeps on decreasing and eventually and ultimately when the object is at infinity then point size image is obtained exactly at the focus right so these are the points which you need to remember in case of the image formation when an object is placed in front of a concave lens. As students do remember, here whenever a ray is parallel to the principal axis, after refraction it appears to be coming from the focus. So that is the reason why a concave lens is also known as a diverging lens. Right? So we have discussed the image formation both in case of concave lens as well as in case of convex lens. So let us recapitulate. In the case of convex lens, the nature of the image is always real and inverted except in one case that is when the object is placed between optical center and the focus. While in the case of concave lens, the nature of the image obtained is always virtual erect and the size is always smaller than the size of the object that is the image is always diminished. Right? So these are the three cases for concave lens. So students, I hope you have understood this topic completely. In the next session, we will discuss uh, lens formula. A lens formula is a mathematical relationship between U, V and F. Right? And then we will also try to obtain an expression for the linear magnification in terms of the object distance and the image distance. And students, I must remind you, if you like the way I teach and if you like my videos, 
then please don't forget to share the link with your colleagues so that uh, everyone gets benefited from my lecture and uh, if possible do try to hit the like button right thank you